hundreds of millions for themselves at the expense of the nation. I don't want to hear specific what, uh, what specific measures you intend to take uh, at KRA to ensure first that there are proper systems, uh, because as, as you rightly said, that is what is lacking within KRA, besides the management problems that you have alluded to. I think I'll leave it at that for now. Can you manage two in a row? <laughs> Jeanette? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, I wanted to ask the nominee, Chairman. You see... <coughs> uh, uh, he is here as a nominee chair, I forgot, chair. and I forgot, not speaker. I forgot, speaker. as I a chairman of any formation out there. Honestly... Actually, I hope, Mr. Speaker, he was not referring to me being the chairman of ODM. I've already resigned. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, Mr. Speaker, you know, for when you call somebody for the last 15 years chairman, that yes. becomes his name. Yes. So anytime I find I used to call him chairman. Now, Mr. Nominee, two th one thing I wanted to ask you is... Uh, that you have explained it very well, but you have come to this position, you are coming to this position at a time when the economy is not in a very good situation. And as you are aware, 70 shillings of the 100 shillings collected is going to pay debt. And Kenyans don't even know whether we are paying real debt or fake debt. That's what they are grappling with. So how will you ascertain what kind of debt we have, whether it is a fake debt or real debt? Secondly, as you are aware, the poor in this Kenya feel that this economy is rigged against them. They don't feel they are part of this economy. What measures will you put in place to tell Kenyans, the poor ones, that you are part and parcel of this economy? Issues of pending bills, Chair. Issues of 30% uh, of the budget. I mean, uh, nominee. No, no, nominee, nominee. Issues of 30%, how will you achieve 30% of our budget to go to the development expenditure? My last question is, nominee, you know very well, me and you, never believed in this bottom-up economy. Now we have found ourselves here. You know what we believed in. You know your principle must guide you. What, how are you going to marry this? different thoughts of bottom-up economy and what you believed in. You participated in manufacturing another uh, economic uh, manifesto. So tell me how you'll marry the two, uh, Mr. Nobini, this bottom thing now that you're inside. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me start by addressing... S leave the laughing to the public. Uh, uh, just, just listen and... Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. I think... Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, allow me to start uh, by responding to the questions raised by the leader of majority, my friend, uh, Kimani Chungwa. Yes, I agree. We have complained, Mr. Speaker, previously that our budget estimates, especially on revenue side, not realistic. In fact, I have, I'm persuaded that we have been using revenue as a balancing figure, revenue projection as a balancing figure. It's like what we do as a country is we look at our expenditure level, where we want to spend, how much we want to spend. Then once we get that total, then we ask ourselves how much can we raise from the loan or debt market external and domestic, then the remaining amount we put as revenue projection. That to me is very wrong. We must reform the economic policy department of national treasury. Reforming is, does not mean you lay off staff. I want to be very clear there. Just focus our economic projections so that they are realistic, they are based on evidence of economic growth. If previously you have not been able to collect so much, why do you then pretend that you can collect so much in the subsequent year? Like, Mr. Speaker, we have collected only 2.2 trillion this year from ordinary uh, revenue. Yet we are projecting to collect, we had projected initially before uh, the, uh, the challenges we faced with the finance bill to collect 2.9. That is a whooping 700 billion 
increase. That was not realistic. Right now it has come back to or come down to 2.6. So we must be realistic in our revenue projections. But even be that as it may, we must also still enhance revenue collection by reforming KRA because we are still under collecting. But in terms of uh, budgeting and projections, I agree with Honorable Kimani Chungwa that we are going, going forward, we are going to be more realistic so that we don't have big budget deficits and budget revisions in the course of the year as we have had it previously. In terms of how do, I, do we address the challenges of collection of taxes, custom duties, it is, and I mentioned it, the system is porous, we must make sure that we automate it and automate it properly. Sometimes we pretend to be using automation, yet we use outdated systems, systems that are just aiding uh, the leakage of uh, revenue instead of helping. We must carry out proper review and uh, evaluation of KRA. I have the first meetings, that I will guarantee this committee, if you approve my nomination to become the CS National Treasury. My first meetings will be focused on how to reform KRA. Because without that, we are not going to succeed in revenue mobilization. Honorable Junette, you've raised the issue of debt and you have asked how do we determine real from fake debt. I don't want to use it fake or real, but I talked about accountability, debt accountability, public debt accountability. And I said, I am committing that we must try to make this a statutory document so that every Kenyan knows how much we, we owe to who and at what cost. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about in debt management is we must manage our liability. We have to restructure our debts. Let me just, just give me one minute, Mr. Speaker, to say the following. That if you look at how our debt was structured, especially external debt, in 2010, we had 60% of that debt, 66 actually, under multilateral, which are concessionary loans, and only 4% on commercial debt. We moved to a point where 31% in 2020, 31% of our debt was commercial debt. Averaging interest rate is 8 to 9%. That is not sustainable for an economy. It is now coming down, it is 23%. My focus is to have commercial debt at no more than 5% of our debt portfolio, external debt portfolio, and have 75% of our debt under multilateral debt, and only 20% 20, 20 or thereabout on bilateral debts. With that, you can clearly reduce the cost of debt. But something else about debt is, Mr. Speaker, and sample this, honorable members. Our debt portfolio is 50-50, almost. External, domestic. Yet, interest payable per year on external debt is 260 billion. On domestic debt is 700 and almost 50 billion. Three times, we are overborrowing domestically and we have raised the interest rates of borrowing domestically. I know I'm one of the people, if you look at my, my wealth declaration, I own, I have a government bond, a bought of 13 million, and I'm getting almost 16% returns. That is unsustainable. We must have a conversation. Mr. Speaker, and not to uh, scare anyone, we must have a conversation with banks. We are not going to control interest rates. We want rates. you to give the country hope. Yes. And you are doing so. Go yeah. Yes. We are not, I'm not going to advocate for interest rates control, as in setting the rates to be charged. It had very disastrous result when we attempted that, remember, through a legislation. But banks promised us, Mr. Speaker, the banks promised us that if we remove the rate caps, they would loan even more to the private sector. Presently, that is not the, tr the case. In fact, bank executives sometimes can just sit and take teas and uh, do nothing, but still make money for shareholders by buying government bonds and government bills. We must move away from that. Actually, we have crowded out private sector. You can see the youth is up in arms. They have no jobs. Because the private sector is not borrowing money from the 
uh, from it's not lending. Is, the private sector is oh, not borrowing, not borrowing money banks, yes. to invest. And so we can't create jobs. Yes. I know that one of the reasons why we have been raising the interest rate is to control inflation. Inflation has reasonably been controlled now at 4.6%. We must also be alive to the fact that we must balance the two. There must be a net of effect so that we also grow our economy. Thank you. Uh, finally, there was the issue of um, how, what do we do about the poor and the pending bills. Pending bills is a serious matter, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. I think it is something that we must agree on. I know we are moving as a country to a cruel basis. As an accountant, I know with a cruel basis of accounting, then we will not talk, be talking about pending bills because there will be no cutoff. Any bill that comes will automatically move to the next financial year and pay it. But these pending bills, a lot of them are also, also fictitious. I know there is a committee in place, and I don't want to criticize that committee. I know it is headed by the former uh, Auditor General, Edward Ouko. But Mr. Speaker, I ask myself this question. The pending bills that I'm told have been submitted to that committee, or before that committee, is upwards of 663 billion claims. And there are a total of 114,000 plus of those claims. How do you have one auditor, even if you're a genius, with a few months to audit that and give you? So what I'm saying in a nutshell, Mr. Speaker, is that we need to have a system where there is nothing like pending bills verification. Because it has become a way of just failing to pay pending, I mean bills that are owed. We must have a system. Not only that, yeah. nominee, you remember about eight years ago, yeah. there was a committee to verify pending bills. It became a toll station. And all the committee was doing is go to a town like Eldoret, pitch in a hotel, and people with so-called pending bills turn up with briefcases yeah. and have their pending bills approved. Exactly. You remember? Yes. Yes. And it what are happen, you going to do and differently? It may, it may happen again and again. What my proposal would be is that we may have to, pro to have a system, and it can even be through a legislation, where a, a legislation we have in the PFM Act that pending bills form first charge. But we should criminalize failure to pay pending bills. But above all, as CS Finance, which does not even require any policy or any legislative uh, uh, intervention, I will make sure that we have a system in place which locks anyone who attempts to pay a new bill and ignoring an old one, the system can lock you out. So that first in, first out. If a bill is supposed to be payable, let it be paid. This idea, I remember I, I've been an accountant at the University of Nairobi, and during our time as a speaker, what, what used to happen is you'd prepare checks. You know, there was cash flow problems. You'd prepare checks and put them in a drawer, many of them, a bundle. And so people come, and there was a, a, a big uh, a black book where, which was called check register. So the suppliers come, and uh, checks are issued through that register. So depending on how nice you talk to the accounts department, then your check is released. Yet the one for honorable speaker even goes stale after six months. Those are things that we can cure through a system where you have an accounting system which allows payments to be made on first come, first served basis. Thank you. Finally, uh, honorable Jeanette asked me a question I didn't expect to come from him, but I expected to come. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I've been asked about bottom-up. Bottom-up economic transformation agenda. That is how it is called. Let me tell you, let me, uh, uh, through you, Mr. Speaker, tell Honorable Jeanette this, that bottom-up is actually a concept of uh, UDA, read Kenya Kwanzaa. But I want to tell him that if you look at the philosophy of UDA and ODM, there is no difference. <laughs> Actually, the two are social democrats. Yes. The two. 
mm -hmm. political parties, promote social democracy. But let me leave that for that. Look at better. What is it all about? Mm -hmm. It talks about job creation. It talks about cost of living. It talks about agricultural productivity. It talks about digital economy. What about ODM? What was in our manifesto? We talked about the same. Actually, the better concept is on value addition. Now ODM manifesto, which I participated <coughs> in drafting, we had manufacturing emphasizing on agriculture as raw material. So it is manufacturing supported by agriculture. Did you read Animal Farm? I, I read it some time back, Mr. Speaker. Yes. But now, better is on value addition. Yes. For, for agriculture for value addition. ODM, agriculture for manufacturing. Semantics. But again, finally, yes. Mr. Speaker, uh, housing was our concept, both of us. But finally, Mr. Speaker, there is the Constitution and the PFM Act, which will guide my uh, conduct in office if approved. Thank you. Naisula, speaker, yeah. if, yes. Uh, if you allow me, Honorable Speaker, just a supplementary on uh, one of the things John Buddy said around uh, working with the National Treasury and uh, your work as a member of Parliament, the abuse of Article 223. Yes. And uh, you know, since we were both in the Budget Committee, this has been a huge problem. And it continues to date. You've had in the recent past very senior government officers trying to arm twist people in the National Treasury to pay even confidential expenditure out of uh, Article 223. I don't want to hear what you intend to do to now stem from uh, the, the, the root cause uh, or, or, or where this problem emanates from the National Treasury, abuse of Article 223. Lastly, when you spoke about the good things that we lost in the finance bill, you may or you may not agree with me that Partially, the problem was out of very poor communication by the National Treasury. Kenyans out there were left to just listen to what was being said by members of parliament during debates on the finance bill to know what were the good things in that finance bill. How differently will you now, uh, at the helm of the National Treasury, if approved by this committee, will you communicate to Kenyans to be able to know that uh, a finance bill, as you said, is an omnibus bill? It has very many good things for the benefit of the country which get lost uh, in the misinformation and disinformation campaign that was there with the last one. Uh, so my question is how will you uh, shift the communication from the National Treasury and with all respect to those who were there before, uh, there was literally no communication coming from the National Treasury. Uh, how do you intend to change that? And I agree with you on uh, the pending bills but uh, also tell you that uh, probably what you also need to do is look at the procurement. For instance, and you've been a member of parliament all these years, CDF. There are never any pending bills in CDF because of the system through which we procure. You only procure when you have exchequer with you. So probably as, uh, as you, if you get approved, that's one of the other things you need to look at, uh, to remodel whatever is being done in mainstream government with CDF. Mr. Speaker, I'll go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Speaker. To the nominee, Honorable Bombardi, you are on record in Parliament during debate of um, the last approval of the Cabinet uh, Secretaries, and it is, uh, it's gone viral, widely known. 